Hello, beta testers. <laughs> AI can do better. And in seconds at that. Why are exclusively women in Western games made so deliberately ugly? I respect your time, so instead of advertising or begging you for likes and subscriptions, I will answer this question in two sentences. They are ugly in an attempt to lower the bar so trans might appear feminine by comparison. Biological, testosterone-fueled men, born with a dick and balls, have demanded women call them women, only to rob women of rights and downgrade them relentlessly. Call of Duty recently removed an in-game skin that it created in collaboration with a popular streamer. Why? Because Nick Merckx simply said, leave children alone. Blacklisted publication Kotaku, an equally unprofessional outlet The Gamer, frequently screeches about a lack of representation, what they ironically call diversity and inclusion, when they hypocritically seek to remove any feminine representation of women. They're not asking for extra seats at the table. They're so triggered and hurt by the mere existence of pretty, natural, actual women that they even take issue with digital depictions of feminine presenting women. Religiously, they pump out tantrums that they refer to as articles really mad at women like Megan Fox for daring to have breasts. This dude calls Megan Fox's dress underwear, which is understandable because you can assume just by looking that they've never been invited to a dance or a ball, but dude has actual balls. And we guess and that's why you triggered because you want to be similar to the alternate skin for Cami that you're mad enough about to write an article over. This outfit has existed in the iconic and adored Street Fighter franchise for longer than you have likely been demanding people refer to you as a woman. You don't have to ask if they're thirsting over men because of course they're fine with that. The scantily clad, muscular depictions of men that are not a threat to them. Many of these trans activists in the gaming industry do not care about quality and it shows. A trans reviewer for Wired took time out of their busy but toy reviewing schedule to give Hogwarts Legacy a 1 out of 10. Is it because Hogwarts Legacy is truly that bad and deserves that rating? You know, everybody has their own opinion. But some opinions, many opinions, this opinion is wrong. They unprofessionally rated Hogwarts Legacy a 1 out of 10 because they disagree with the sentiment shared by the original creator, the sentiment that people born with a dick and balls are men. Fable is the newest game that has garnered over 14,000 dislikes in a trailer that was featured in a recent Xbox showcase. In this CGI trailer, a dress-wearing female-presenting character is instantly apparent and effortlessly repulsive. This is a video game, so she was deliberately designed to look this way, and if it were a DreamWorks movie or any animated film, the intention of creating a character like this would be to make them ugly. I have power. They can't take it away from me. In my spare time, I go out to my yard and I and I prance around and I and I eat grass. There, there are some people that should be afraid of me. So I, I represent uh, moderation and diversity. I think a lot of you gamers are actually white supremacists. Sorry. Just a fact. Can you honestly dispute that? Some game studios feel the need to make their characters so ugly that sales suffer. Sad when the models they use are so beautiful. This is an exclusively Western problem, as Hideo Kojima's technology clearly allows him to make beautiful people a reality in his extremely impressive and innovative works. Women and men alike. Hideo elevates and evolves the medium, showing progress and upgrades that you would expect as time progresses and technology advances. Inclusion 
should mean what it is defined as. More variety, more choice, but trans people demand attention, and they know that pretty girls would draw focus. So like a girl deliberately putting herself next to uglier women, that is what trans people in the gaming industry attempt to change the definition of things, to argue with the consumer. If you don't like it, you're the problem. You're sexist, you're a bigot, give me your money, please. Players will take their money elsewhere. Thank you for being there for us, Capcom. Saints Row Reboot recently bombed, costing their joke studio to be rolled into Gearbox and following a deal falling through, Embracer Group is really feeling the pain. Good. Saints Row Reboot could easily have made you a billion dollars if you made sure that you didn't employ woke, out-of-touch, virtue-signaling trans activists that were more interested in failing to re-educate children than making it an entertaining product. Americans don't like censorship. We don't want things toned down or more tame. We want explosions, blood, tits, ass, guns, beer, and not queer beer, sadly. Japan is making better, higher quality offerings than Americans could ever at this point, and people like IGN's top editor, being either a dimwit or a shill, claiming that a CGI trailer is gameplay is not just pathetic, it's shameful. From Software released real gameplay of their Armored Core game, and after the Game of the Year Elden Ring, you better fucking believe that they've secured our fucking purchase. Hogwarts Legacy is exactly what it says on a box, a magic wizard game, and it's sold accordingly. People don't want the box to say Avengers, and then have Kamala Khan, the video game with microtransactions. We like it when things are what they say they are, not a woman with a dick and balls. Trans people, however, want to take the dinosaur out of Jurassic Park. They can't create anything appealing or relevant. So their best chance is to claim something with a pre-existing audience, an IP they have nothing to do with and know nothing about, and to corrupt it to suit their child targeting indoctrination attempts. Cults do this. Cults threaten exodus if you don't agree with and wave their freak banner without question. This is why women in Western games are ugly. Women exclusively. Because these aren't just some groups with groomers among them. They are groups of groomers kneecapping themselves and their products and their game's ability to succeed. Casting the time that has been spent by people working diligently who probably don't even get online or engage with any of this identity politic bullshit who've been wasting their life for years on a game they can't even put on their fucking resume because it's gonna sell like dog shit. And quite frankly, <laughs> you're driving off the talent in droves. The creative people leave these studios leaving the inexperienced and out-of-touch activists to fail at making a functional game. You want some Redfall? Comedically. They could dupe more people into buying their joke of a product if they weren't so offended by a pretty woman. But they want the body wide and run things. <laughs> okay. So I say again, even in design, the most effortless potential copy and paste portion that we already know you hacks are very well versed in. You're failing. AI in seconds can do better. Turn him into a girl. Make her attractive. Give her long hair. Picks to picks can mix this up with less than four words. And it's objectively more appealing because it's pulling from what people like, from what matches these terms not what you have recently de redefined these terms to mean but what the terms are actually defined as feminine masculine you can't blur the lines between that so i see people like mudahar trying to imply that this isn't at a glance repulsive and that there isn't a snap judgment being made by any human after a glimpse this is the purpose of an advertisement allowing to educate you to appeal not to repulse to sell not to repel you ever sold anything in your life you ever made some fucking money you know anything about anything you ever been in a relationship you ever speak to people you social you get out of your fucking room because this isn't something that you can refute 
attack people's looks all you want, but you're recognizing in doing so that you can't touch their point. That's a tactic out of their handbook, they them's handbook. So jumping to their credibility, whatever works for you, buddy. Buddy. You know, regardless of which pussy from wish you wish to ally yourself with and defend, as they hypocritically hate women, recognize I have more passion in a finger nail for this gaming industry than these clown liars can manage with a bag of coke. And I don't have to tell anybody because I show them and will continue to regularly. The trans cult is losing their grip on this industry and I believe in it. You know, they don't have many Saints Row reboots left in them because people are done. The data doesn't lie. You're free to misinterpret and believe that the reason for it is, is anything other than what's right in front of you, you know? But what does it change? Did it change where Saints Row reboot ended up? All of that, all of that data was right in front of you. The developers were arguing with fans, telling them they're not going to back down, that they know better. Volition's community manager, Deadly Steph, called fans terrorists for reporting their buggy mess. But they're right where they belong. The trash. Backlash for Rocksteady's Sushi Squad game was absolutely suffocating because just like Fable, they had a poor showing owed to hyper-specific issues that repulsed and alarmed people who would otherwise probably have been interested. It was negative press. AI can do better. But with woke development, there's this necessity to attack attractive women, and these studios deserve worse than what they get. Harley Quinn is arguably one of the most popular femme fatales of all time, inspiring cosplay, Halloween outfits the world over, with a frequency that's paralleled probably only by Heath Ledger's Joker as far as the niggas you gonna run into at a costume party. But this is what Rocksteady made her look like. She used to look good, but... You know, after the visionaries who founded that studio and made some money, made it what it is, built something, you know, a statue tall enough for the, the shadow to just kind of eclipse the weirdos who have the, the reins right now. They're gone. Got to be ugly now. I don't let these these people virtue signal. I get under the skin of the right people to make sure that whenever a Dove Soap and Epic Games Unreal wants to talk about how there needs to be more inclusion of underrepresented people, there are 1,600 skins in Battle Royale over 24 seasons, but only one big girl is available for purchase. Is it because she don't make money? Because there's tons of big dudes. There's tons of furry, muscular dudes. You know what I'm saying? Big dude, polar bear, fat guys, fat Thor, you name it. A lot of it. But y'all want a virtue signal about inclusion? When you couldn't even put one girl in BR without censoring her. Because men and furries can be shirtless and muscular. But women are not allowed femininity and must cover up. I mark the degenerates in this industry. And the data you ignore will shine so bright it disintegrates your sorry ass. And when we look back in history, the right side, you fucking cult, you, you, you people claim to be on, it'll look a little different than you think that it's going to. Argue, complain on Twitter all you want, attempt to explain your lackluster products into the good graces of players that, honestly, at a glance, knew that they weren't interested in. But just like this Ryan dude has to lie to, to, oh, this CGI is actually gameplay. That's the best y'all got. Making things up. Suck, suck, slurp, slurp, shill. But remember, nothing anyone does or says can ever do more damage than the choice you made to make women irrefutably ugly. Thank you for listening.